Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and today we're taking a look at the HP 15Z EF2000. This is one of those laptops that kind of flies under the radar. It's not heavily marketed, it doesn't even have a name, but it's powered by a pretty decent processor, the AMD uh, 5500U. This is their new 5000 series processors, and this is the first machine I've received with one of those chips inside. And I was eager to see how this new generation of AMD processor compares to the last, and it's complicated. We're going to dive into this one in just a second, and I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from HP. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this device is all about. These machines typically cost a lot less than they do right now. And I think the reason is, is that component shortages are driving costs up significantly. And hopefully as we get through the year, we'll see these machines come down in price. But at the moment, you might want to look at a few models above this one just to see if you can get into something nicer for just a little bit more money. Because right now the price difference between this and something nicer is not significant. And I would definitely urge you to shop around a bit because uh, this is just very expensive for what it is, in my opinion. Now, this does have a 15-inch display. It's 1080p on this particular model. Uh, the brightness max is 250 nits. The display doesn't look all that great. It's kind of washed out. Uh, they say it is an IPS display, which typically gives you a nice sharp image. Uh, but this one doesn't look like the typical IPS displays that I see. It feels closer to a lower quality TN display. So I wasn't pleased with the display quality. The entry level model has a 720p display, a much lower resolution panel in the same size. And I would urge you not to get that one. Uh, the 1080p is nicer than that, but it's not uh, something that really is a strong point of this particular device. So just be aware of that. Inside, we have that AMD 5500U processor. That's the new 5000 series chip. Uh, this one will perform a little better than the last generation, and we'll dive into more on that topic as we go into the gaming portion of the review. Uh, there's 8 gigabytes of RAM on board DDR4 in dual channel mode, which is great. Oftentimes, these machines come in single channel configuration, which doesn't get the most out of the processor. This one is nicely configured. You can upgrade the RAM. Our demo unit here came with a 128 gigabyte NVMe SSD that's on the right-hand side of the unit. You can upgrade that, of course, so you can go up to higher capacity just by swapping in a new drive. So it's nice to see that this does have some upgradability to it, uh, which was nice. The weight on it is about 3.75 pounds or 1.7 kilograms. That's not bad for a 15-inch laptop like this, but it's really lightweight because it's made out of very lightweight plastic. So I don't think it's all that durable. I was also quite disappointed with the keyboard. Uh, it is not backlit. It's very spongy, so it's not very comfortable to type on. You do get a nice big number pad here on the right-hand side, which might be good for number crunchers, but the keyboard really is not good. It's probably the worst feature of this next to the display. Uh, the trackpad isn't bad. It's a little more narrow uh, than I typically like, but it's got a good amount of uh, horizontal width here to it. So it's tracking pretty nicely, pretty easy to use. It is a little springy. You'll feel your, your finger kind of spring back up from it when you click down, but not bad for a laptop in this category. Uh, ports are pretty good on it. You've got a power port here for the power adapter. That adapter is quite small, as you can see. Not going to take up too much. I'll give you the other view here. Not going to take up too much room in your bag, so that isn't too bad there. Uh, two USB 3 ports here on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, we've got a bunch of useful ports here. The first is an SD card reader. Uh, this will take in most of a full-size SD card. So when I put this card in here, as you can see, it does stick out a little bit, but it's not sticking out as far as some other laptops do. So that was nice to see there. Uh, you might be able to get away with having it walk around with you. Uh, the card is not spring-loaded. You've got to pull it out manually. It doesn't pop back out. But I actually think that's a good thing because you won't accidentally uh, eject the card and send it flying if you happen to... Uh, bump into the laptop or something in transit. So that was a neat uh, feature on the card reader. Uh, you got a headphone microphone jack here. You've got some status indicators for the uh, system on the right-hand side here, a power and a disk indicator. 
Uh, you also have a USB Type-C port, but this is not a full service port. This only does data devices. So you cannot power this laptop with the port, uh, nor does that port send video out. So if you've got a docking station, you're not going to be able to make use out of all of the things that that docking station can do, data only. Uh, this port here is an HDMI output, so you can hook it up to an external display if you want. That'll probably look nicer than the internal display will. And the speakers are here on the top. And actually, the speakers sound pretty good on this one. Uh, they're quite loud, good stereo separation. They're upward firing, so you're not going to get uh, some of that muffled sound you'll get with laptops that put their speakers on the bottom. Uh, and they sound pretty good. It's not, you know, audiophile quality here, but if you're listening to music and stuff, it's not offensive. And of course, it'll sound better if you plug in some headphones or uh, do some Bluetooth speakers or something. But still, not bad here for the onboard speakers on what is essentially an entry range laptop. There is a webcam here at the top of the unit. This is one of your run of the mill 720p webcams. Nothing spectacular visually, but it's good enough for your Zoom calls and everything. Uh, the AMD processors here are really well suited for that kind of work. So if you're doing a lot of remote conferencing still, uh, you'll be able to get that done on this computer with the camera at the top. Uh, there is no shutter mechanism here, so if you don't like having that camera pointed at you all the time, you're going to have to put something over the lens to block it. All right, let's take a look now and see how this performs. I've got it on my Wi-Fi network. Uh, the model that we have was configured with AC Wi-Fi. It runs on the 5 gigahertz network. It's not running with the, one of the newer Wi-Fi 6 radios, but it's adequate enough for doing basic web browsing. As you can see here, everything is rendering in very quickly. Uh, no real concerns that I could see browsing around the web, which was nice. So you will get a good snappy experience here doing the basics along with some more advanced web-based applications. Really nothing is going to slow you down on this one. A little bit earlier, we also checked out YouTube. I booted up my 1080p 60 frames per second video. And here we were able to play that video back successfully without any drop frames working their way into the mix. We did have one when it started, but it was able to keep up just fine without issue. So altogether for doing the basics like web browsing, email, and word processing, I think it is definitely more than adequate. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 138.5, which is very good. In fact, this performed about as well as a much more expensive Dell XPS 17 did uh, with a high-end Intel processor. So again, these AMD chips really are nicely performing. And you can see on the chart here how this stacks up with other comparable machines, including uh, the previous generation 4500U there at the bottom. Now, AMD has been putting a lot of pressure on Intel to up the performance game on laptops at all levels, especially at the lower end of the spectrum. And every generation of AMD Ryzen processor has been a real improvement over the prior one. But this year, it's a little more complicated, unfortunately. And I've got to pull up a chart here to illustrate uh, this point. So the 5000 series processors are kind of broken out into two branches. One branch is based on the prior architecture we saw in the 4000 series processors, the Zen 2 architecture. And then you've got another batch of 5000 series processors with the next generation architecture called Zen 3. Now remember, this laptop has the 5500U processor on board, and therefore it is running with the prior generation architecture, and you're not going to see as big of a leap in performance as you would if this was powered by the 5600U processor. So I'm going to try to get in one of those. And it's a bit confusing for consumers because typically with AMD, we've been seeing these big generational upticks from one year to the next. This time it's a lot different and you've got to be really careful when you're shopping to make sure you get the right chip in your computer to get the performance you might be looking for. Now the games we ran on it did run very nicely, but about at the same performance that we saw out of the prior generation AMD processors. This is Red Dead Redemption 2, a very demanding AAA title. It is running at 720p lowest settings and we were getting about 25 to 30 frames per second. Very playable, but not that much better than what we saw out of the prior generation 4500U processor. Uh, note we could not get the game to run at 1080p, and I suspect that might be due to the amount of RAM it has on board in its current configuration. 
This is No Man's Sky running at the lowest settings, 1080p. We were getting about 25 to 30 frames per second on this one. And you'll also note when the uh, astronaut there jumps out of the ship that the textures are not fully mapping to him. And you'll see that here right now. Uh, and I suspect what's happening here is the same problem we had trying to get Red Dead to load up at 1080p in that we only have eight gigabytes of RAM total that has to be shared between the system and the graphics. And I bet you if we had 16 gigs of RAM, this would uh, look better, but play at the same frame rate. This is Rocket League. We ran this at high settings, 1080p. Looks great, plays great. 30 frames per second is what we were seeing here and altogether a very nice experience on this older game. Now you could get this to run at 60 frames per second by either going to 720p or dialing back the settings at 1080p. But this gives you an idea as to what the gaming capacity is of the laptop here. And again, it's not all that much different than the prior generation 4500U processor. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 1,170. That is an improvement over a 4500U based machine we looked at a few weeks ago from Lenovo, the ThinkBook 14G2, but it's a marginal improvement, not a generational improvement. So to really get that big bump, you'll wanna to go to one of the new Zen 3 versions of the 5000 series. And the rule of thumb that a viewer told me on a live stream the other day is look for the even numbers in the chip number. So this is a 5500U, that's an odd number. The 5600U is the even one. That's got the Zen 3, which is the next generation of performance. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a failing grade of 93.3%. Passing is 97% on that test. You can see what the temperature of the processor was while that test was running. And what that indicates is that you will see some thermal throttling. The system will slow itself down a bit to prevent overheating. And that's if the fan can't keep the system cool enough. The fan noise though is very minimal on this. Even when it's running a game that's really stressing it out like Red Dead Redemption, it's not overly loud and obnoxious. It doesn't sound like my gaming laptops do. Uh, there is an intake here at the bottom that you'll want to keep clear. And it seems to uh, not make all that much noise while you're doing some heavy duty work on it. Now battery life on this is not going to be spectacular. You saw how small the battery was when we took it apart a little bit earlier. I would expect you'll get about six hours or so doing the basics on the laptop, keeping the display brightness down. If you're playing games or doing things that are more strenuous, you'll see uh, less battery life than that. Uh, so just keep that charger nearby. You typically don't see great battery life on some of these entry level models like this one. All right, one last thing to take a look at and that is its Linux performance. We booted up Ubuntu 21.04 and like we've been seeing on other AMD devices, everything is getting detected properly and it boots right up. So video, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, audio, everything here seems to be working as expected. Good performance. It feels about what it feels like in Windows. So if you're looking to run something other than Windows on this, I think you'll be able to accomplish that without too many challenges there. And overall, it's not a bad laptop. I always like to look at this end of the market because you can often find some nice surprises. This one, not so great though, because the display isn't spectacular and the keyboard is pretty lousy, but the performance is there. And my advice to you as you're out shopping for a PC is that if you don't need something flashy with awesome battery life, you can often find good performance in packages that look like this. And I am always on the lookout for these laptops. So as we come across them, I will review them and try to find some of the nice hidden gems of this generation of the AMD processor. Again, just be very careful when you're shopping because if you are looking for the Zen 3 architecture, which is the latest and greatest from AMD, you've got to make sure the even numbered chips are the ones you're looking for because this one is based on the prior architecture. We'll be keeping an eye out for those AMD machines as we roll forward here. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Jim Callagher, Hot Sauce and Video Games, and Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.